Graphing rational functions. Here we are. Finally, we've made it. We're going to start graphing rational functions. Now, I, I want to talk about everything we've talked about up till this point. We talked about domain. The domain of a rational function everywhere except for the, where the denominator is zero. X-intercepts are where the numerator is zero after canceling common factors. Y-intercepts you get from plugging in X equals zero. Vertical asymptotes are where the denominator is equal to zero after canceling common factors. One thing we didn't talk about about vertical asymptotes is that they themselves have multiplicities, much like zeros have multiplicities. And even multiplicities, so look right here, these guys should have vertical asymptotes at two. Um, look at how these function, how the function, how the rational function goes the same direction on either side of the vertical asymptote. Whereas with the same function, but multiplicity one, they go in opposite directions. That can be a useful thing when graphing, just a small thing to keep in mind. Horizontal asymptotes, these are the rules. We talked about them before. Here's some examples. Um, so no horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote that's not at zero, horizontal asymptote that is. And then oblique asymptotes. So oblique asymptotes are the obtained, is it not scrolling? Wait. Hmm. Why is it not showing the bottom of my screen? That's strange. Oh, it's lagging again. No, you don't do this to me. Okay. Um, this video is going to be laggy. I've already started it. We're not starting over. Oblique asymptotes happen when the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator. So degree three versus degree two in this example here. How are you going to show my mouse? There we go. Um, so degree three versus degree two. We obtain an oblique asymptote by doing polynomial long division. The oblique asymptote is the quotient. So just a few examples of rational functions. These are just pictures, all right? But I want you to get an idea of how they look. Oh, this whole thing is real laggy. Notice with the horizontal asymptotes, and the vertical asymptotes, the, the rational function is going to hug them. It's going to hug them as it approaches them. Sometimes we come up and we come back down. Sometimes we come and make this fun little curvy shape. With these corners here, notice that the rational function always makes one of two choices. It's either going to make this shape here, or if it were to go down here, it would make this shape here. So things that we need in order to graph these rational functions, we need to know where their asymptotes are. That's important. We need to know where their intercepts are. But that's not enough for us to fully graph the picture. We're also going to need to have a little bit more information about points around the asymptotes, because we need to know if this thing goes up or if it goes down. So let's, um, let's scroll and let's do an example. Graph the function 2x over x squared minus 2x minus 3. All right. So we want to find the domain of this function first. That's going to require factoring. So we have x minus 3 times x plus 1 in the denominator. We don't want the denominator to equal 0. Oh, it crashed. OK, let's try again. OK, better. We can't keep anything in our domain that makes the denominator 0. So we know that x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal negative 1. I want to remove those values from my number line. So here's negative 1. Here's positive 3. We are removing them. Our domain is from negative infinity to negative 1. 
union, negative one to three, union, three to infinity. Find the x and y intercepts. Note the multiplicities of the x intercepts. The x intercepts, so the x and y intercepts, um, the x intercepts are when the numerator equals zero So the numerator is going to equal zero when two x is equal to zero. Oh man, it is really lagging. She has taken her time. Okay, there we go, we caught up. When two x is equal to zero, that means when x is equal to zero. The multiplicity of this zero is one, which means it's going to cross the x-axis. For the y-intercept, that's plugging in x equals 0. So we're trying to find f of 0, plugging in 0 for x. We get 2 times 0 over 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3. That's 0 over negative 3, which is 0. So the x-intercept is 0, 0, and the y-intercept is 0, 0. The only intercept we have is 0, 0. I'm going to go ahead and plot 0, 0 right here. And while I'm at it, oh, I haven't done the vertical asymptotes yet. We'll do that next. So find all asymptotes, vertical, horizontal, and oblique. For the vertical asymptote, I'm looking at where is the denominator equal to zero, sort of exactly like we did with the domain. So we get x equal to three and x equal to negative one as our vertical asymptotes. And maybe I'll make those in black and highlight it, blue. So 3 and negative 1, I'm going to go ahead and come in here and draw at 3 and at negative 1. Horizontal asymptotes are comparing, comparing the numerator, the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator, no, sorry, the degree of the numerator is 1. I was looking at the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 2. So the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And that means that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I can come down here, and at y equals 0, right here, plot my asymptote. So now, in order to figure out what shape this is going to make, we need to plot one point on either side of the asymptote. So let me, don't do that. You're really looking at the, maybe that's a bad idea too. <laughs> You're really looking at the x values directly to the left and right of your vertical asymptotes. So if you have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, you want to find a point. You want to find the coordinate point at negative 2 and at 0. So you want to plug in the x value, negative 2, to this function up here. 
doing this on your calculator is the best way you could do this. So, okay. Um, I, I've pulled up my calculator. I want to show you how to do this quickly on the Casio calculator that I've recommended for the class. I am having a lot of trouble getting this video to not be blurry. So I do uh, apologize. I tried. Um, let me show you how to use this awesome calculator to do what we need it to do, um, even though it's blurry. So I wanted to plug in negative two to this function, right? Was it negative two? Now I'm forgetting where I am. Negative two. I can take, and I'm gonna plug in negative two, and then I'm gonna click this little STO button, and that means store. So I'm gonna click it. Nothing appears to happen, although something did happen up there. And then I'm gonna click this X button. Notice it says negative two is now stored in X. I'm gonna push enter for good measure. Then I'm going to type in my original function. So my original function was 2x, using the x button up there, over x squared minus 2x minus 3. And I'm going to push Enter. Now, know, know that because I put negative 2 into the x variable, when I push Enter, it's going to plug in negative 2 for me. So the y value at negative 2 is negative 0.8. The next y value, y value I'm going to want is at x equals 0. So I, well, I, mean, I know what that one's going to be. But I take 0, I store it in x, go back up. So I just scrolled up to back to my function. Be careful not to click the AC button, because that'll fear your history. Uh, and then I'll push enter and it'll give me zero. So zero, zero is a point. I'm also gonna wanna plug in two and four. So two, store it in the X variable, go back up to my function, push enter. That's negative 0.3 repeating. SD changes us back and forth between fractions and decimals. So negative four thirds for x value, whatever it was, 2. And then we can do 4, store it in the x variable, go back up. The y value at x equals 4 is 1.6. As a fraction, 8 fifths. When you're doing this on Alex, you're going to want that fraction. Um, in a decimal like this, it wouldn't matter because it terminates. But in a decimal like the one we had right here, you can't put negative 1.33 into Alex. You'll need to have it in its fraction form. Anyways, that's a cool thing your calculator can do. Um, let's get back to what we were doing. Let me rearrange my office. <laughs> All right, so what I've done here, I've chosen x values just immediately to the left and right of our vertical asymptotes, and then I plug those values into my calculator um, to get the y values. That was what I just showed you now. So I have negative 2 and negative 0.8. Uh, negative 2 gave me negative 0.8. So that is a point on the graph, negative 2, negative 0.8. So it's like here. The point 0, 0, I have already plotted. That was an intercept. We have the point 2, comma negative 4 thirds, which is like negative 1.3-ish. So over 2, down 1.3. And then we have the point 4, comma 1.6. So here-ish. Now, what that tells me, I know with vertical asymptotes, I'm looking at either this shape here or this shape here. It's going to be one of these two. Because there's a point in this quadrant, in quadrant three down here, let's make this like a tiny bit thicker here. Not that much. No. Oh. Maybe we'll just make it black. Yes, I am this nitpicky. All right. That is not the shape. Man, and you know what I'm trying to say there. It's like that, but less square. The other thing we know about the shape over here, we know that the x-intercept had multiplicity 1, so it crosses the x-axis. So we know it crosses, so it has to go up this way and come back down and go this way. We know it doesn't loop back up because there's no other x-intercept. Much like with the dilemma we had over here, 
it's either going to be this shape or this shape. And because we have a point right here, we're going to pass through it. And bam, there's our graph. So let's, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Here we have a function. We know x cannot be equal to 1 or negative 6. Those have to be excluded from our domain. This is going to end up being negative infinity to negative 6 union, negative 6 to 1 union, 1 to infinity. The x-intercepts are going to be when the numerator is equal to 0. So it's already factored. So I'm going to take the numerator, x plus 3 quantity squared times x minus 2. And I can pull these down a little bit. Here we get the 0, x equal to negative 3. It has multiplicity 2, which means it's going to bounce at that x-intercept. And we have x equal to 2 with multiplicity 1, which means it crosses at that intercept. So we have an x-intercept at negative 3 comma 0 with multiplicity 2. And at 2 comma 0 with multiplicity 1. Plotting. Plotting. For the y-intercept, we're plugging in 0 to this function. So we're finding r of 0. We have 0 plus 3 quantity squared times 0 minus 2 all over 0 minus 1 quantity squared, 0 plus 6. This is going to end up being, let's see, 9 times negative 2, negative 18. 1 times 6 is 6, negative 3. So there's a y-intercept at negative 3. That's the point, 0, negative 3. Vertical asymptotes are going to be when the denominator equals 0. We already found those up here. They're going to be the same ones. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And this one has multiplicity 2, which means that when we draw this vertical asymptote, either they're both, both sides are going to go up the same direction, or they're going to go down the same direction. There's also a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 6. This one has multiplicity 1, which means they'll go in opposite directions. So it'll either be like this, and then this, or this, and then this. Ooh. So let's put one at 1. Let's put one at negative 6. That's not at negative 6, but we can move it to be at negative 6. There we go. Excellent. Horizontal asymptote. We're comparing the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. If you look at the multiplicities in the numerator, there's a total of 3. There's two x's come in from here, an x from here. In fact, the degree on the top and the bottom is going to be 3. So there is a horizontal asymptote at a ratio of the leading coefficients. y equals ratio of leading coefficients. Leading co -Fs. Good enough. The leading coefficient, if I were to multiply this whole thing out, you would have an x squared and an x. Why don't we just do it the way that we've 
done it before. Here's how we've done it before to find the leading term on the top. When we're trying to find the leading term, we can just ignore everything that isn't the leading term in each factor. So you end up with x squared times x on top, x squared times x on bottom. So you get x cubed over x cubed. If you simplify this down, it's one. The, le the leading coefficient on top is one. The leading coefficient on the bottom is one. So I know I'm saying leading ratio of leading coefficients, but it's really a ratio of the leading terms. It's the same concept when we're talking about uh, rational functions because they will, the, the x's will cancel. Anyway, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Not 0, y equals 1. So y equals 1. I'm going to need additional points on either side of my vertical asymptotes. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. I'm going to use the points 0 on one side and then 2 on the other. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 7 or negative 6. which means I'm using the x values negative 7 and negative 5. One to the left, one to the right. I'm plugging these in my calculator. I showed you how to do that just a moment ago. Um, so that is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to pause the video while I do that. All right, so I plugged these x values into the original function, this guy right up here. The y values I got were 0, negative 3, which is already plotted because it was a y-intercept, 2, 0, also an intercept. Then I have the point negative 7, comma, 2.25, 2.25, like right in here, and negative 5, comma, negative 7 ninths, which is approximately negative 0.8. So negative 5, negative 0.8, right down there. So you can get an idea of what this, this picture is going to look like. We know that the multiplicity of, this, of negative 3 is 2, so it bounces. And that makes sense based on what we're seeing here. So it would go like that. Again, for, the, for this portion of the graph, it's either going to make this shape here or this shape here. Because we have a point up here, it's going to make this shape. Same thing here. And we know that it crosses here because the multiplicity is 1. And there's that graph. I guess I have two problems left. Man, that's a lot of problems left. You know, I think I'm going to break this up into two videos. I really have to, I have to get going. I have to go home to my son. So this is going to be two videos, I guess. Um, we will take the other part. Well, I'll do the other part. For you, it'll be a click away. Goodbye. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you later in another video. This video, part two.